Hey. Uh, oh, hey. my God. That camera is way off. <laughs> I think it got bumped. <laughs> it had to have gotten bumped. Everything looked good. Everything looked good. We're so low crew right now. We're very low crew. It's just us. It's just us. Oh, I'm going to grab a mic piece real quick here. Real low crew. Ah, thank you, Kaiju. <laughs> that camera definitely got bumped. Um, what Eats. is up, everybody? How's it going? How you doing? Uh, welcome to Comics and Coffee. It's been the first, first goddamn episode first that Zach and I have done it together. It took us having to be locked in yeah. quarantine together. Freaking quarantine. Uh, you know what? That means it's been a really long time since I got to do this. Ooh. Kind of a little sp- something special for us right here, buddy. Yeah, a little that. something special. Sorry about sticking my hand all over the microphone. I just had to get my little uh, fluff piece on. Mm. Gonna let that breathe mm. for 30 seconds. You smell that? Gonna let it breathe. Hey, I mean, you got yourself some mango rice over there? I did. Oh, You've got your lunch over there. I should have asked you for some. I've never tried that. You've never had mango sticky rice? We had this conversation two nights ago. We did. Remember Malika <laughs> was like, I'm going to make some. And we're like, oh, maybe we'll hold off till tomorrow. And then tomorrow we got too busy. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, so, guys, uh, uh, welcome. Yeah. yeah, you got it. I'm going to pour coffee. I was just going to say, thank you guys so much for joining us. I'm very, very excited to be doing this show. Like Zach was saying, it's the first one we've done together since 2020. Since uh, 2019. 2019. Uh, yeah, that's true. The last episode of Comics and Coffee we, that we got to do uh, was last year. So, I'm super excited to be here to be able to talk more about comic books. If you joined us for Hypercast earlier and you're back watching us on Comics and Coffee, thank you so much. Um I'm excited to. Uh, we're gonna do a we're gonna do a read along today. Yeah, I'm we're excited, gonna read man. Plunge. I called it. I actually was gonna read it. I just ran out of time. We're gonna read Plunge. Yeah. We'll go to the first one and read it to, okay. to catch everybody up. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, it's gonna be great. I'm very excited. So thank you guys so much for joining us. We're gonna talk a little bit about well, what's happening, and then we're gonna you know. Sorry, my pants run zipped. I don't know why. Happens. Oh, we're in quarantine. That's why you wear sweats, <laughs> baby. That's why you wear sweats. I'm day on day five three. of sweats. I mean, it, we're pretty much on like day five or six of social distancing. Yeah. But day three of our camp social distance here at Hyper RPG. Yep, yep. We are participating and separating ourselves from the outside world to help slow the spread of COVID-19. That's right. As hopefully you are doing as well. But we are still here to give you wonderful content every day of the week, Monday through Friday. I might even do some weekend streams. I might even just play some Magic the Gathering with the chat over the weekend. Nice. We're locked in our house. What else yeah. are we going to do? Catch up on sleep, content, <laughs> and bills, and everything else well uh i mean augie and hector and i have been trying to figure out how we can do a hyper heroes Mm -hmm. and if if they're currently all three of us are well and good but we also know that the that the virus itself you know doesn't necessarily show symptoms right away one of us could have it one of us could have it so we're we're debating whether or not we want to have them come here we know people who probably do have it so it's like well let's isolate ourselves yeah completely. so we're kind of debating whether or not we want them to come here and do it or we maybe could do it remotely somehow yeah. so we're, we're working on it um jojo johnson i think on this show and on hypercast has been saying zach do hyper four season two that's not up to us why, why i don't know how many that? times we have to tell people that yeah. we don't own power we don't rangers, own power rangers we can't just we do it. it we made a show but it wasn't even our call yeah like and Back then, that was Saban. Saban got bought by Hasbro. Yeah. Hasbro owns Power Rangers. We don't. So that's how licensing works. Yeah. You know, it's it's they own it. We are not Saban or Hasbro. Nope. Nope. We are Hyper RPG, a small family-owned company running out of our studio in Los Angeles, which is currently on lockdown. So myself, Adam, and Malika are running the entire uh, streaming company for however long this is going to last, I see the outside world out this window. I see all those cars going by, and I'm just like, what are you? Wow. Do you ever look out the window and, What's it like? and, and ask yourself, where are all these people going? I do right now, especially. Yeah. Because that interstate is busy. It's busy. And everything's shut down. And where are you going? Where the farts are you going? What are you doing? Stay in. Read comic books. I, I actually like had a really good time. So I, I only got to read two books, mm-hmm. and you know we're not we're also not trying to read a thousand things. Yeah, we got in trouble. I'm gonna yeah. be totally honest with you guys. Money's been tight here at Hyper RPG. And and comic this, books are not free. This is a show that doesn't. Uh, this this is a show that doesn't make uh, money. Uh, yeah. So boss came back to us and was like, "Hey, you can't spend 120 dollars a week on comic books anymore. Yeah, you just can't do it." Okay, you're right, boss. Thanks. Thanks for the heads up. You got it. Uh, whatever you say, boss. So we're going to have to kind of limit what we get, which really yeah, bums me out, I but know. it's just the way things are. But I do want to encourage people that are watching on, on YouTube, if you use the Super Chat function on YouTube or you go to HyperRPG.Live and donate using our Streamlabs account, 
you can either tip to donate a shout out or a question yep. or anything that you want. And if you tip and a question, we'll go through all we'll of them at the end. We'll go through all of them, at, we'll the all of the them at the end uh, so we don't interrupt our flow while we're sitting here and yeah. doing all this wonderful stuff. But, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the general idea. I read two comic books this week. One of them was a comic book that I had been looking forward to reading since it came out a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And one was a random one that I was interested and intrigued by. Okay. And we'll talk about how I felt about it. Okay. Well, why don't instead of going through what we bought this week, sure. why don't we go through what's for sale on Comixology? Because okay. we're only going to be reading one or two now. So let's yeah. just scroll through like what's for sale. Uh, and now I think is a great time for us to also just maybe talk about like comic books in the age of COVID-19. Movie yeah. theaters are shutting down. Yeah. Uh, film shoot and productions are shutting down. I think one of the bastions of entertainment outside of live streaming is going to be comic books. I 100% agree. Because yeah. comic books can be made from the comfort of people's homes, mm-hmm. and they often are. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the entire comic book industry outside of printing can be run remotely, and even that yeah. can be kind of run remotely because they can yeah. just say, well, this is going to go straight to Comixology and not to print. Right. So we can just export these files and just put it together as a PDF or whatever. Yep. Um, I mean, that's how it kind of was when I worked at DC Comics was there was so much stuff that I was personally working on that I was translating a lot of original comics mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. to digital. And a lot of times that was like going into Photoshop and fixing things up. But then, yeah, we would take the book and we would put it into a PDF format once it was ready to go. And it would just get uploaded to, to CX or Nook, Kindle, all, yeah. all these different services. All right, this is just about ready to pour for you, baby. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Get some comics and Ooh, coffee. Yeah. I was going to make another cup earlier, and then I thought, I'm going to hold off till hold three. Off till the show. It's already three. Blows my mind. Crazy. I so, feel like I just woke up. Yeah, same. I mean, it's been it's been nuts. So for those of you who mm-hmm. may have not seen Hypercast before or you're not, you haven't watched us on Twitch, we are doing Camp Social Distance every single day until we know what's happening, until we're not on some sort of a lockdown. Um, and we're changing up the programming. We're tweaking the programming every day, not changing. We're, we're doing different things, but the things that we are doing consistently every single day, we're doing Hypercast starting at 1 p.m. We're doing some type of board gaming at 4. Malika is also doing some great survival skills and tips uh, at, at 2 o'clock. She's done cooking. She's going to do some fitness stuff on Friday that I'm super excited about. Uh, some stuff maybe to prepare you for tax season, which I believe has been technically delayed and extended but in any case yeah, it's good, it's all good, good skills to know, to know. Uh, we're also doing video games right now we are doing death stranding which, which is, is a mind f- fuck it <laughs> seems a little too timely a little too crazy yeah a little too timely as well and we we yesterday our audience got us to our goal for the day so we did a live stream of cats the movie and jesus lord my almighty, it was I will be scarred atrocious. for life. You now officially own that movie in your Amazon catalog. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm very worried about what it will do to my algorithm. <laughs> I work real hard on that algorithm. Oh, man. You know, my Spotify algorithm has been destroyed yeah. because of our audience. And it's now, true. It's true. It's true. now my Amazon algorithm yep. is going to yep. be destroyed. You know, I'm, I'm all about, like, when I log into Netflix or log, on, get log into Amazon, I want to see the things that I think they'll that think bring, I like. That bring you joy. <laughs> not It's not cats. That. <laughs> Uh, and then at 6 p.m. we're doing dinner and a movie, and tonight, because we polled the audience and most of the audience uh, have Netflix accounts, we are going to be doing a watch-along of Raiders of the Lost Ark. So pumped. A movie I have I'm not seen in a so very, 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 very long I time. I'm so excited to watch this movie, love, though. Love, love, love that movie. I didn't mention this, but the last time I saw it in, full, in its entirety was in high school. It was a 35-millimeter print. Uh, because of the theater across from where I worked, used to do midnight screenings, so I got to watch it in, in, in theaters, which was really, really cool. These are old beans. So it's a, they're a little okay. old. Yeah, whatever. But hey, man, it's coffee. It's better than Keurig, but I, it's a little bitter or a little bitter here. Cheers. Cheers. Happy new so comic. So far, we made it. Ah, that's fine. It's got a little bite. A little bite. A little, a little bite. sharp bite little at the end bite. there. Cheers to you guys. Um, so yeah, we're doing Raiders of the Lost Ark tonight. Then after that, we're going to be doing Death Stranding. Our goal, if we hit our goal for today. Which we're a long way from. We're we a long are. way from. We're a long way from. I'll, I'll show you right now how far we are from it. I'm so so the goal for us every single day in order to kind of keep the lights on and keep us going so we don't get thrown out of our, uh, our studio slash apartment that we live in is, uh, you know, we're how, how far are we? We are only at 6% right now. 6%. So, so we're, we're 94%, 94% away from, from our, our daily goal. goal. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if we hit our goal tomorrow, 
we will watch uh, Train, Train to, to Busan. Busan. And I've never seen it. And I haven't I'm either. really excited haven't about I haven't it. Either. Uh, and I know it, it might feel, for some of you who are watching everything we do, it might feel a little redundant that we keep asking uh, and bringing up support. Um, these are very trying times for us and everyone. And um, we want to be able to give you content without constant interruptions. Yeah. Like, we know that if we just sit in the studio and let you guys tip to play songs for us, it will work. But yeah. we also don't want to, like, turn everyone away who might actually want some really great content from us, like Comics and Coffee, like Malika's detailed discussions, mm -hmm. like Hypercast. Uh, so we'd love to figure out a way to keep you all feeling that those are worthy of your support as well. And uh, outside of just, you know, tipping for songs and things like that. So yeah. uh, hopefully you feel that this content is worthy of you supporting uh, with either a subscription or a uh, tip at hrpg.live to help us keep the lights on and survive through basically our entire network being shut down besides us two and Malika. So, uh, should we get right into it? There's yeah, some comic book baby. news we could talk about. Uh, like, we, we kind of mentioned that mm -hmm. I think comic books are going to be something that survive through all of this fairly well. Yeah. Uh, because they are often made from home. Yes. Artists and um, writers and inkers are all communicating over email already. Mm -hmm. This is very much within their wheelhouse of how they create content. And I think for already. a lot of people who are still looking for a way to get physical books, I know that there are certain comic book shops that are still open. I know Matt, I think he's in the chat room as well. Mm -hmm. He went to a comic book shop this morning and picked up his his weekly pull. Mm -hmm. So some shops are still open, um, but it, and if you're nervous or apprehensive about going to a comic book shop, so this is just one example. This is from Things from Another World, which is a comic book shop in Milwaukee. Uh, what they're doing on their Twitter, they posted, starting today at 6 p.m., you can do curbside pickup Whoa. for comics in your box and any ship-to-store orders from TFAW or TFAW stores. You can set up an email and do all that stuff. Wow. And uh, they also, as a reminder, they told people like, hey, it's only credit card payment only. We're not doing cash orders for obvious reasons. Um, so you should probably check and see if your local comic book shops are doing something like that where you can have your pull list sort of put into a box or some sort of a package that you can pick up without having to have any sort of human contact if you still want physical stuff. So um, I think it's really cool. You know, we talked about in Hypercast, Malika mentioned how there are restaurants in L.A. Who, that are also trying to adapt. Aside from just selling the food that they have on their menu for pickup or delivery, uh, they are also at, they're also uh, offering ingredients. Restaurants have a plethora of stuff. So if a supermarket doesn't have eggs, maybe your local restaurant will. So it's really cool to see how some of these companies are trying to adapt. And like Zach was saying, comic books are one of the things that definitely can be made Remotely, 100%. So. All right. Uh, so buy them. Buy them. Pick them up. Read them. Now's a beautiful time to like catch up on some there, There's one other little bit of comic book news that dropped literally an hour ah, before yes. this show. Yes, yes, yes. And God I think it's us. worthy of discussion. Yeah. And hopefully we can have a uh, an honest discussion. And I can pull it up so we can show it on screen. Yeah. Marvel released some images um, on Twitter, I believe, was where it was released. Or maybe it was a press release. Press release. Might have been. Um, uh, it was Marvel.com. Yeah, it Marvel was. Marvel.com. Oh, boy. All right. The so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this up warriors. here. Um, Marvel.com introducing the new New Warriors. Thrasher's one of my favorite characters, by the way. Oh, my God. I love I I, I grew up on the New Warriors. I love, yeah. I love it. Love it. He was badass with a skateboard. <laughs> well, we'll so introducing uh, some new characters. And there's a press release, but they released some new uh, characters, and already the uh, internet is reacting very negatively. Mm -hmm. And I don't think from who Marvel was expecting to react negatively. Yeah, I think uh, this almost feels like troll baiting, but um, a lot of Non-binary and transgender people have been posting on Twitter about how tone-deaf this is. Um, so they introduced two new characters, Safe Space and Snowflake, psychic twins. Uh, Snowflake and Safe Space are the twins, uh, says the writer, and their names are very similar to screen time. It's the idea that these are terms that get thrown around on the internet that they don't see as derogatory. They take those words and kind of wear them as badges of honor. Uh, Safe Space is a big, burly, sort of stereotypical jock. He can create force fields, but he can also trigger them if he's protecting somebody else. Snowflake is non-binary and goes by they, them, and has the power to generate individual crystallized snowflake-shaped shurikens. So, 
the writer's trying to say that these characters wear these names that some might consider derogatory uh, with pride, but uh, this just comes off. <sighs> yeah, Osmosis says, this is so, how do you do, fellow kids? <laughs> um, it's so tone deaf. It's very tone deaf. It, it's one of those things that when you see, you know that they didn't consult people who identify yeah. with this <clears throat> and who will be the most excited about these characters. I think this would be a feels good like idea. someone with good intentions, yeah. not taking the proper steps and and being a little bit too confident in their own ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it, it feels very white ninety to me. It's like it's that kind of idea of, oh, I know what'll help, but not actually reaching out to the people who live with this kind of torment online all day right. and, and, and all the time and have to deal uh, with these issues. I mean, uh, a lot of people recommending like make them the colors of the non-binary flag instead mm-hmm. of uh, bright blue and change their names. Like everyone yeah. is pretty much in Come agreement. On. Change their names. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to kind of have a discussion and see if anyone in our chat room who may be identifies as non-binary, not to, um, I don't want to, Ask anyone to out themselves if they're not comfortable to. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you, you know, um, are nine bo- non-binary, how are you reacting to this? How do you feel this? Are you excited to have representation within a comic book? Or do you feel like this representation is coming from a dishonest place? Yeah. Uh, somebody in our chat says it's a shame because Daniel Kibblesmith is a good writer. And good writers make mistakes. What? Where is this voice? Um, we are talking about Marvel just put out, well, okay, so Malika, um, might have some thoughts on this. I'm going to give Malika a headset and Adam can explain to her exactly what I just said. Okay, cool. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so, Marvel put out this press release for yeah. these brand new characters. Yeah. Non-binary characters. Uh-huh. Snowflake. Well, only one is non-binary. Oh, only one is. Snowflake. Snowflake. Uh-huh. And s- and safe space. Yeah. And it's very on the nose. Well, and a lot of people are also well, saying also the it's snowflake one is kind of offensive. Very, you know, very tone deaf. Yeah, because it's been used in a derogatory right uh, way. And it seems uh, we were we were just talking. It seems very much like this was somebody at Marvel who was like, you know, I think this would be a really good idea to do this mm-hmm. without actually consulting people who identify as non-binary and just asking the question. What do you think about this? So you know? uh, a little personal background on me. Um, I am kind of on my own kind of gender identity journey. And I think I am right now settling on being a non-binary queen. Um, uh, I mean, for a while now, when I d- do public speaking things, I, I say I use all genders, you know, because I've never corrected anybody in my life. And I came to the realization that that's like for a reason. And some other stuff we don't have to get into right now but um marvel has a history of being like very on the nose about stuff though oh we're going to war against germany let's make an anti-nazi character Mm. with a flag on his chest you know so like i think it was you know like they're just very like let's make the superhero version of this but like uh, you know, Snowflake has, okay, as a person who, you know, I have proximity to whiteness, I realize I am privileged, but also I understand what it's like to be marginalized. Um, feeling very personally hurt when people call me a snowflake or uh, like my friends or allies just being dismissed uh, as a snowflake. It's extremely hurtful, and maybe this was an attempt to reappropriate that term, but yeah, I, I do feel like it's strange. Mm-hmm. It's strange, and then also we have all these cool new characters that can just be like Captain Marvel, or like they're just their name, or like they have some cool name like Daredevil. Like why couldn't they just be like some cool, you know, cyborg, scientist, genius rich person you know yeah uh, iron man right uh instead of like snowflake i'm like mm, and their like logo design is a snowflake i'm like this this term has been used to hurt a lot of people mm. in this community right so i'm like I, I don't know about it but we'll see what kind of media comes out uh I'm, like i'm curious to know their story and right? the, so the quote from the writer 
He says, Snowflake and Safe Space are the twins, mm -hmm. and their names are very similar to screen time. It's this idea that these are terms that get thrown around on the internet that they don't that they don't see as derogatory. They take those words and kind of wear them as a badge of honor. Mm -hmm. Safe Space is a big, burly, sort of stereotypical jock. He can create force fields, but he can only trigger them if he's protecting somebody else. It feels like they're trying to do the whole thing where Trump called uh, Hillary Clinton, like, nasty. Yeah. Uh, so then women tried to claim, I'm a nasty woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, like, reclaim it and wear it. But women had to make that choice. Yeah. 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 Women Not, chose right. That. Right. Not a marketing team. Right. right. And a white writer. Not yeah. Marvel comic books. Yeah. yeah. Marvel entertainment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. so, uh, yeah, I don't, like, I personally, like, want to reclaim, like, social justice warrior, like, I think it sounds very cool. Like, why wouldn't I be a social justice warrior? I believe in social justice. I will fight for that. But like I said, it's been used so much to be like, uh, you know, in, in a way to hurt people. Yeah. You know, and hurt people's <laughs> mission. Yeah. Like Daniel Mazzola says, I like the on, on YouTube says, I like the idea of making throwing stars out of ice, but the names are terrible. You know, These are awful. yeah, like the power, like the powers itself could yeah. be really, really cool and the way they, they use them. But yeah. And I mean, I, I, I understand. Sorry, everybody. I understand yeah. my mic wasn't picking up. Uh, what I what I said was it's like when Donald Trump called yeah. Hillary Clinton a nasty woman and women chose to say, I'm a nasty woman. Yeah. But, but they, they chose reclaimed it. that. Yeah. They reclaimed it. Uh, that was their choice when it's a marketing team with a That's like if white I said, male but creator. But women are nasty. But I meant it in a positive and way, but it's like, yeah. it's not my responsibility yeah, it, it, or my job or th there should not have right been for me some, to do that. Somebody should have consulted someone. Yeah. Uh, and seeing how quickly the internet has backlashed against this. I mean, you, you mentioned, you're like, oh, did you see what's trending? And it literally was like within minutes. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I follow a lot of comic book writers and comic book fans. So, it was uh, for me, it was like the top trending topic of this afternoon. Yeah. Uh, I doubt it's like trending nationally, but it's definitely trending within. I mean, the I did the circles. same thing. I just hit explore, and it was like, it was before it was like the fifth yeah. entry on my Twitter feed. So uh, interesting. I think it's worthy of discussion, yeah. and I you love know, to hear your guys' I, thoughts. I hope I I really do hope that Marvel reaches out and works with consulting with someone, which is always yeah. what happens. And I know sometimes people say that. Um, that's reactionary and whatever, uh, and people get upset. But I think it's we should applaud that instead of uh, instead of not. Basically, I think that if Marvel does reach out to somebody who is non-binary and asks for their help, instead of people coming after that person who's non-binary or still telling Marvel and holding like that doesn't help. We should say thank you. Do that. Yeah. And keep doing that, yeah. Because uh, that's the only way we'll get change, yeah. And we yeah. have to, we have to kind of like positively reward the companies that say, okay, we messed up, and now we're gonna talk to somebody instead of saying too little, too late, right? Say, okay, good. Now you have your fiasco. Don't do it again, right? And I'm sure it can be very frustrating to have to like, you know, I don't know, but you would hope that this is a learning lesson, and it sucks that it has to be this way. You mm -hmm. would hope that they would take the steps first before they did something like this, and instead yeah. of being like. Uh, you should have done this and then having to go back on it and we're like, you know, whatever statements they end up making, but yeah. Yep. So let's check out really quickly what is for sale today mm -hmm. in the Comixology store. Um, we have Iron Age 2020 issue number one, Machine Man number two. I, I really actually enjoyed Machine Man in the Iron Man run, mm -hmm. so I'm interested to see what they do with that. Okay. It's uh, only two issues. So far, yeah, two yeah. of two, yeah. Uh, Fabulous Apocalypse, Arrow. I, we're just going to scroll through here. If you see things that kind of stand out to you, let me mm -hmm. know. Um, lots of number ones this week. Yeah, yeah. So many number ones came out this week. I had to be very picky about what I wanted to read because there were, were so many number ones. And I know before we would read a ton of them. But Aftershock's got one. Artemis and the Assassin. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I really need to catch up on a cinder. I missed an Incredible Hulk uh, uh, book that came out last mm -hmm. week, so I'm going to catch up on that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's so much, so much stuff. Great, great week for comic like books. Like, bad reception. It's on issue four, but I'm like, man, that's a... That cover is that dope. That cover is dope. It's I really want to cool. read that. I yeah, want to read really all cool. that. Uh, Bitterroot number seven. I got to catch up on Bitterroot. I, I'm basically just going to go through here and realize how far behind I am on yeah. everything because of our schedules. I mean, there was like 200 
I think it was like over 210 comic books, and I'm going through, and I'm like, man, I got to read this. I want to read this. I want to read this. There's so much stuff. Immortal so Hulk. I, I misspoke. I'm sorry. I don't uh, even know what you said. Yeah, I don't either. But somebody in the chat's correcting me, so I'll assume they're right. I misspeak all the time. Uh, Deceased Unkillables. Wait, what? Issue number two. Oh, dead. Missed that one? I need to get that. Okay, That's, yeah, yeah. That, I, Deceased has been so great. I've right? really liked it. So great. So metal. Uh, Langley and Neely says, I tried Force Works 2020, not feeling the 2020 stuff. Yeah. 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 Is that kind of the general consensus by, by a lot of people? I wasn't really a big fan. Uh, what is this shit? Female Force Stormy Daniels? Comixology sells some real shit I saw that, every once yeah. in a while. Have you noticed? Thank and, you for the new sub. Maybe, thank you so much. And maybe this is not the case. Uh, and I just I noticed it today. A lot of like labels and publishers I have not heard of. Comixology has been getting a lot of that lately. Okay. Yeah, okay. a lot of like random stuff is moving over to complete digital. I mm. think Comixology is making their process to get your stuff on their store easier. Gotcha. It also means we're having to we're having to siphon through a lot yeah. of weird 200 shit. 200 books and I, I like of the ones I definitely wanted to read it was maybe like 15. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, there's six pages mm -hmm. of books this this uh uh, one of the books I'm most excited about catching up on is Heartbeat. I've been hearing good things about it. Cool. Uh, so I, I technically too, have yeah. all five issues, so I'm going to catch up on those when I get a chance. Good. Now I can read them. I really wanted to check out Hotel. Um, Which, yeah. Interesting. Just like, again, for me, sometimes it's like judging a book based on the cover. Covers, I'm like, okay, this this looks like yeah. I, I read a little bit of the, the premise. and Maybe. Maybe. This is also something that drives me. I mean, it's hilarious every yeah. every uh, every week when I see it. League of Legends puts out their comic books in every friggin' language that Comicsology supports. That's why. That's why you see copies. so many. It's there. It's oh, smart. Yeah, some of these have not loaded. So it's like Greek, Rom Hungarian, Romanian, Korean. Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. Interesting that they don't just have like a uh, language. Mm -hmm. so. We had a new Marvels yeah. uh, X 2020, uh, which is just the year it came out. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Middle West, which is one of my favorite books on the yeah. stands. I had a new issue this week as well. Uh, let's see. We've got, oh, Hector's been loving this. Mighty Morphin mixed with uh, I wanted Teenage to, Mutant I wanted Ninja to Turtles. get it, but, you know, it's yeah, issue Hector's four, so I'm it. like, oh, I got to, I got to. The trade will be coming out soon. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be spending some crazy Buku dollars. Money Shot number uh, Volume One came out. I know that's one that some of our readers mm -hmm. uh, or viewers. This sorry. Mr. Kill looks uh, kind of cool. <laughs> interesting, yeah. interesting. Uh, see, sometimes, and I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. When I judge a book, I often judge by publisher. Gotcha. And if it's an indie book you're without kind of, a publisher, you're kind of training me on that. Yeah. If it's an indie book without a publisher. I will do a lot of research before I buy yeah. it. So I won't judge it by its cover because you can sometimes hire a really good cover artist. True, true, But then true, I'll be true. like, okay, I don't even recognize who this publisher is. Yeah. So I'm going to do some research first I guess before I, do I spend my money yeah, on Yeah, and it. I guess I do a little bit of both because I look at the cover, I'm like, oh, interesting. And then I look at the publisher, I'm like, I don't know who that is. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to just like impulse buy. I want to, same like you, right. do a little research. So Outlaw number one also came out if you're a fan of, uh, you know, Miss Marvel mm -hmm. and uh, – Nova and Spider-Man. That should be a good one. Mm -hmm. So Plunge number two came out, and I was so intrigued by it. I went back, read Plunge number one, and I think that'll like we're gonna scroll through these really quick, and I think we could fit in reading it because. Cool. Uh, yeah, and, and I want to talk about the whole yeah. Joe Hill partnership with DC, which mm -hmm. is so cool. You know, we lost, we we lost DC's independent publishing arm, but yeah. at the same time we gained Black Label. And it kind of became Vertigo. It in kind a of sense. became Vertigo, yeah. but they've been doing some interesting stuff that's I like more than DC's usual uh, usual bank. I, I I I really quick. I just like I really like the idea that they have like three. They have DC, but there's also these subdivisions of like Black Label and the kids. Yeah. So we have a little bit of everything for everybody. Lots of we got Spider Spider Woman number one. Yeah. Uh, which is interesting because I, I feel like there was a while there where Spider-Woman had amazing creative direction. Mm -hmm. uh, was that Robbie Thompson? Uh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Or was it James Tinian? Shit. Maybe it was Robbie Thompson. Um, not the best with remembering mm -hmm. things when life moves this fast. But uh, Strange Academy number one also mm -hmm. came out this week, uh, which is kind of like the magic world of of the x-men x-men yeah. yeah that's kind of what i figured it was it looked like it was a uh, school for uh, the magical youngsters mm -hmm. 
And we've got... Uh, there was also some Star Wars stuff that I like... We're already into like multiple issues, so I will have to go back and get some of the other ones. But I'm excited for Star Wars because... Oh, Strange Academy was last week, and this is just a director's cut, probably. Oh, usually, okay. Okay. You know. uh, I'm excited for Star Wars because now they've shifted it from after uh, Empire Strikes Back. Okay. And so they're now working in that territory, and there's also a new Star Wars Bounty Hunters book. So I think Star Wars is putting out some, some interesting things I definitely want to read. And I think there was also the concluding issue of Kylo Ren. The Rise of Kylo Ren that I heard I was really good. highly recommend you all picking up Dr. Mirage Volume 1. Yeah. Uh, highly recommend it. One, one of A uh, really good book. The art's phenomenal. Uh, I want to pick up the Lolo Woods because mm-hmm. that looks like my jam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely looks like my jam. Uh, this tip came in from Ronan Unchained. It's not a question, so I'll read it now. He says, hey, guys, here's to the Hyper Tower staying on and to see you two talking comics. May, may I recommend you guys playing The Last of Us after Death Stranding? Ooh. If we if we, if we end up on yeah. lockdown for a while, yeah, we if might we have get, to fight a new game. If we finish Death Stranding, yeah. Jesus. and uh, Langley and Neely says, "Hotel is like American Horror Story story hotel." That's right up Hector's alley. Oh, okay. Yeah, Hector's alley, really? He, I don't know. Is he a big American Horror Story? I fan? don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. He's been he's been live tweeting everything this yeah. week. So yeah, <laughs> <coughs> I don't personally see Hector much in the indie scene of comics. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he, he loves his superheroes a yeah, lot. Yeah, his Marvel DC stuff. Uh, I did pick up X-Force. I'm excited. Uh, oh, my God. Oh, how did I miss this? Okay. I, th- I didn't pick this up, but this is definitely Eternal my Warrior. pick of the week. If you can afford it. If you can afford it, you will not, you will not be disappointed in this purchase. Wrath of the Eternal Warrior Deluxe Edition Volume 1. Wrath of the Eternal Warrior is, to me, the best book Valiant ever put out. Yeah. It's fucking good. It's so good. I've been singing its praises for so long that I'm sure a lot of our audience has already read it. <laughs> but holy shit. Oh. Is it amazing. Sorry. He meant he meant that the Turtles crossover with oh, Power yeah, Rangers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Alley. That is yeah. way up that's, Hector's alley. That's up yeah. Hector's butthole. When you said <laughs> hotel, I'm like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Venditti wrote... Wrath of the Eternal Warrior with art uh, coming in from David Aha. So good. Pencils by Raul Allen, Robert Gill, uh, Renito Guedes. Uh, oh, yeah, Raul Allen. Sorry. Uh, Raul Allen did some amazing panel work mm-hmm. in that book. Oh, my God. Uh, there's there's panels, pages in that book that just I can't even I, – I, I, I just – oh. That good, huh? Amazing. So I should get it is what Amazing. you're saying. Amazing. Okay. I have the entire collection up there. So what you're saying is I'm going to have to go up there and get it. Yeah, we're not <laughs> going to do that. You should probably just buy it. <laughs> you should probably just pick it up. Uh, so why don't you talk to me about what you read this week? Ooh, baby. What did you give a shot? Okay. So we no secret. Love Murder Falcon uh, uh, and super, super pumped about Wonder, Wonder Woman. Uh, God, I need to remember the name. I believe it's Wonder Woman Dead City. Uh, issue two, there it is, Dead Earth, Dead Earth, Dead, Dead Earth. Earth, Wonder Woman, Dead Earth, written and illustrated by Daniel Warren Johnson. This, uh, this thing is metal as hell. Mm-hmm. Wonder mm-hmm. Woman has been asleep, and during the time that she's been asleep, everything has changed. A lot of uh, the, our favorite DC heroes are dead. She wakes up. I think in book one, they ex- I think they mentioned how many how long it's been since she's been asleep, but I don't remember. I don't remember either. It was about it was like it was, it was last year when we read it. It was that. last year. I did it with you. It was in November, I think. Wow. Um, but it's it's incredible. It's so incredibly well done. The artwork is beautiful, and it's really interesting to see Wonder Woman, uh, Diana, wake up many, 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 many years later and find that pretty much everything on Earth has been destroyed. And the thing that I love about this issue, so at the end of the last one, she actually ends up at the Batcave, in the Batcave in in Wayne Manor, and we find out that Batman is dead. Batman, of all people, has actually died. And so now she's got his utility belt, and she finds this city. She battles the, the cheetah. It feels very Mad Max. And this is the continuation of that story. And Diana's whole objective is to move all these people from where they were hopefully bringing them to Themyscira. So they have to fight this crazy huge uh, 
monster essentially. It's a really cool battle with all these incredible characters and Diana finds a way to defeat the monster. With a jeep. With a jeep. <laughs> with a jeep and then slicing and dicing this, this crazy That's monster so up good. and then using Batman's lighter from the utility belt and basically lighting this thing on fire. It's cool to see Wonder Woman be resourceful yes. as a fighter. Bro, it's so good, man. Uh, I didn't get a chance to listen to this with a Wonder Woman soundtrack, but I think it, that shit would slap hard uh, <laughs> if, you, if you did that. But it's amazing. And, and you know, just again... The artwork, the artwork, the artwork, the artwork is incredible, and it's just so incredibly well written, and I love the fact that it puts Wonder Woman in such a unique position, where obviously she is kind of leading these people at the same time. She's doing it in a world that she is very much disconnected from. Like yeah. She has no idea what's happened. So she goes back to Themyscira. We're going to get into potentially some spoiler territory here. Um, but Diana makes some discoveries. So I, won't, I won't reveal it. So, I the won't reveal it. so the story also goes back and forth uh, between Diana in present day and her time on Themyscira as a young warrior. Oh, cool. And how she gets the gauntlets and what they mean and all that sort of stuff. That's dope. And uh, when she goes back as an adult after all this stuff has happened, they definitely take the story and twist it, and you find out some things that I, I was kind of shocked to see that this is kind of like where we're going with the story. Um, and, and Diana has to make a choice of who she's loyal to, and it leaves the story on a cliffhanger, and it makes me so excited for book three, which is coming out in April. So we're one month away. Uh, this has kind of been out for a few weeks now, but I, I, I had to. I had to find out what happens in the story. But it's very captivating, and there's some surprises. And I'm really curious to see how Diana is going to sort of deal with the fallout of what she learns. And uh, again, artwork is incredible, and I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Cool, cool. Well, I hope you all get a chance to check that out. Yeah. Uh, all of that, all of that, that creator really jumped on our radar, and now I think we're going to be following. Yeah, I mean, it was does. so crazy because you know we read Murder Falcon, and then I met him at Comic Con. He was so incredibly nice, and now I'm like, cool. This is a this is one of the few creators that I definitely want to follow everything he does because it's so great. All right, so uh, next up, I want to talk about. DC's mm -hmm. Hill House comics. Mm -hmm. uh, now, this was announced a long time ago, obviously. Yeah. But now that it's been out, there's a lot of books that you can pick up. And we're going to read issue one of The Plunge here in just a minute. Mm -hmm. But to give you a little bit of insight into Hill House comics, um, uh, DC teamed up with best-selling author Joe Hill to present Hill House comics. Now, for those that don't know, uh, if you've been watching Netflix recently, Lock and Key came out. As a show, and Lock and Key was made by Joe Hill, who is yeah. Stephen King's son. And also... Oh, I did not know oh, that. Oh, you didn't know that? No clue. Really? So Nosferatu? Yeah. The show that he has on AMC, which I watched oh, all the way with through? Oh, with Zachary Quinto. Right. It takes place in Stephen King's universe. There's there's hints to it and no stuff in way. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, you just like f changed my like life. Oh, I'm about wow. to binge everything and read everything. Oh wow, yeah. And Nosferatu, there's like hints of Pennywise and stuff no like that. No way. So, yeah, that's uh All right, well Zach just changed my evening plans. Great. Uh so uh he partnered up with DC to create a new pop up line of horror comic books and uh I'll read you the quote from Hill here. Um, at Hill House Comics, we aim to shock the senses and soak the page in red. With new, hooky horror from seasoned old hands and young masters of the field, all set free to share their most disturbing nightmares for your pleasure. The books are backed by DC's second-to-none comic book craftsmanship, and we're working with the very best editors on parole from Arkham Asylum to craft unputdownable tales of menace and madness. Can't wait to share some of these fresh scares with comic book readers everywhere. It's going to be fun. Awesome. So we've currently out Daphne Byrne, Plunge, the Lolo Woods, and the Dollhouse family. Now, Joe Hill, the only one that he's personally writing, is The Plunge. Mm -hmm. So we're going to read The Plunge issue one right now. But what do you think about like DC ha partnering up with a writer to help run a kind of a subset within the company that's just horror comic books? Uh, as someone who loves horror... This is my shit right here. Mm -hmm. uh, I love I love horror, and that's no secret to anybody. So the fact th the fact that like DC and I I understand that Black Label is meant to be for adult more adult audiences, yeah. but the fact that they are letting someone come in to DC to do something that is not necessarily Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, because you could take those characters in those worlds, and they are doing with Black Label, and you could be like, oh cool, you can do Hill House Comics, but we want you to focus on Joker, Penguin, our villains, blah blah mm -hmm. blah. But the fact that they are letting um, 
this whole thing kind of unravel and let it be things that are not necessarily tied to that, I think is awesome. So, and the fact that you, that you just revealed to me that Joe Hill is Stephen King's son makes me like, Double that excited. I had no idea you didn't know. I did not I mean, know that. I, I didn't realize that. I never uh, let you in on that. That's. Uh, I mean, if his name was Joe King, I would have been like, oh, is he related? But the Joe Hill thing. Yep. Uh, but this is awesome. I, I, I'm i super pumped if about If you this ever now. see him talk, you'll be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Just look at him. You're yep. like, yeah, you're yeah. Like, oh, yeah. King that's King's King son. <laughs> uh, okay. So we're going to read The Plunge right now. So for those that might be joining us on YouTube and or Twitch, we're about to do a live read along of a comic book. I hope you stick around and enjoy. Keep the engagement up in the chat talking about panels or moments. Try and I'm going to challenge you as you're watching us read through this. Pay attention to details. This is a chance for you to get to learn about comic books and how they're made. Pay attention to the color, the line techniques, the art, the way things are paneled together. Uh, sometimes when we do these live read-alongs, it's a little hard to understand the paneling because the way we're having to move through them. Uh, but just try to take it all in and get closer and more familiar with comic books as you might uh, be looking for other forms of entertainment to keep you occupied during this national social distancing. Nomad0036 also says, sounds like what DC tried to do with Helix brand in the 90s, mm, which I'm not familiar cool. with. Cool, I don't know about that either. Thank you, Phil K. Turner, for the bits on Twitch, by the way. Thank you so much. All right, so let's get into it. Also, I'm blind as shit, so hopefully I can read. I'll make them big for you, okay, <laughs> bud? I'm going to make it big for you, all right? I'll make Zach's it big. already hating this. I'll make it big. Here, I'm going to go full screen on this. Let's just go all in on the comic book. All right? The Plunge. Joe Hill. Stuart Eminem. And Dave Stewart. Plus, chapter 14 of Sea Dogs. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Number one. All right, we're going to make this Adam size. Thank Christ. Go get it, girl. <laughs> Go away, lady. Go on. Go on, lady. Oh, go on. So that's a U.S. Coast Guard there. Massacre Bay, Atu Island. Not zero nine hundred and twelve hours. Third of October. Oh. Oh, jeez. Ooh. Oh. Jeez. All right. Wait, sorry, we were handed a note while we were reading. So <laughs> that's very... Um, I know, lady. Nasty, huh? Stinks, too. I, I, uh, oh, God. A girl, let it go. Oh, let it go. Oh, girl, oh. <laughs> Explosions in the water. <laughs> Plunge. Oh, I didn't realize before that that L is a one. I don't know if it was okay. on the... B cover like that. Oh, look it? at that. And I just realized down below, it's uh, mm -hmm. it's like a dash E I pi symbol equals one. Fuck, I don't know anything about math. If anyone in the chat has any clues on what that might be, let us know. Uh, I was a C plus student in math, yeah, so we're both, I took, we're screwed. I, I couldn't get through a college algebra, so I was able to get the dean to let me get through <laughs> contemporary <laughs> math, which took me two times to pass. My brain does not do math. <laughs> Tom Clough says the beach looks like from Death Stranding. You're not wrong. Yeah. Navy Town, Atu Island. 1148 hours. 3rd of October. Shima Station, this is Casco Cove, CGS. Uh, at Atu Station, do you copy? Nothing from Shima yet. For all we know, we've been completely wiped out. That was some wave. Ma'am, I'm pulling in something that doesn't make sense. We're catching an automated distress signal from survey ship Durlith. W what's strange about that? I'm sure that wave flung a lot of boats around. Try and raise the radio operator and... They're non-responsive, ma'am. I'm not sure they can respond. The automatic distress signal includes the time and date they began broadcasting. And? They began transmitting April 4th, 1983? Uh, that sounds like a glitch. I, I, I don't think... I mean, I looked, it up. I looked them up. Durlith went down in April of 83. All hands lost. What the f... Anchorage, Alaska. 1018 <laughs> hours. 4th of October. I'd rather just say 1018 hours. Yeah. <laughs> 4th of October. Barnum. 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 Okay, so she's feeding. Oh. 
Our little tadpole has grown fast, isn't he, Bill? I remember we only had to fret about losing a couple fingers. You all right? There's something wrong with the bristle worms, Mariah. It's real bad. You want to have a look? How bad? Uh, are they off their feed this morning? No. They're eating each other. Dun, dun, dun. Dr. Bauman said you want to see what they're doing before we separate them. Dr. Bauman was right. This is how they swarm before a reproductive cycle, but they don't usually ingest each other. I've never seen behavior like... (coughs) Bill, be a mate. Fish out the debtors? I want to dissect the the dearly departed. Oh, and uh, cover the tanks? Kids. Dr. Bauman? Bloody hell, I don't know why they're going at it, but... uh, Oh, terribly sorry. I was expecting a call from... Never mind. Go on? Yes, I'm familiar with Atu. Uh, I wrote my dissertation on deepwater Arctic corals in the Aleutian. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, how long since it went missing? Wait. Who did you say you were again? Lacombe. David Lacombe. And you'd be Captain Carpenter? Yeah, are, are you the guy from, from the company? The guy? Yeah, the guy that the, they sent to look at my uh, dildos? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> I uh, knew that part was coming up, and I wanted you to have to fuck read you. it. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> so go ahead, continue. Uh, I think this is you, actually. Nope, that's you. You were the one with the hole in the dildo. Oh, oh. These things are uh, mint, man. Big as elephant cocks. 72 cents of manufacturer in China. Insurance company uh, let you have them for a quarter piece. You can't just find a bigger prick for prices like these. Motherfucker. That's actually on his business card. Or if it isn't, it ought to be. No, I'm afraid there's been a misunderstanding. I don't want your... Wait, just out of curiosity. How many rubber dicks do you have on hand? (laughs) On hand? Just this one, buddy. But there's 9,000 more at the bottom of this ladder. They were in a shipping container and got swept off a carrier down by uh, Moresby Island and uh, in the big blow we had a couple weeks back. David Lacombe, VP of Special Projects at Rococo International. I'd love a word with you about a job. Maybe in your office? You're uh, standing in it. Rococo, don't you guys have a contract with one of the big international salvage outfits? Your corporation seems a little uh, out of your league. Way to market us, bro. Carpenter wreck removal... We don't have anything bigger than dildos. It's one killer slogan after another today. We should start writing these down, Clark. We do have a usual team, but they aren't uh, quite right for this. What's this? Uh, What this are we talking about? You lose a boat or not? We did. 40 years ago. The derelict. Back then it was state of the art. An underwater mapping and oil exploration. 32-man crew, all hands lost. And you turned it up? How, how deep is it? If you're talking about deep water recovery, now that is our speciality. It isn't underwater. Well, not all of it. It's hung up on a reef, and two days ago its automated distress signals started transmitting. After 40 years? What? How? Spooky, huh? Real ghost story stuff. Ship of the dead, like a lonely voice calling out from a house you know is empty. Feel free to never share a thought like that again. How is one of several questions we'd like to resolve? The derelict is broadcasting from just off Sinikik. I'll fuck myself. That's Ungagagag. I know where it is. Suddenly this is starting to make a whole lot more sense. Where's Ungaya Godzilla? Russia. Uh. Possession of the Sinekic Atoll has never been formally settled by any treaty, law, court, or written understanding. The Russian Federation has their view, but Rococo International takes a different position on the matter, one supported by our allies in the U.S. Senate. I hasten to add. It's the position... Of, oh, was that, was that me? Was, nah, whatever. It's the position of the Kremlin that it belongs to them, and anyone who disagrees can deep throat an AK-47. Pretty easy to understand why you're not going with your usual salvage team. They didn't want the gig. It's not salvage when you ransack a ship from foreign waters. It's piracy. Hold on there. It's our boat. No matter where it washed up, we have a right to reclaim our property, which we can and will defend vigorously in any court of law. 
We're ready to approach Russia if necessary to secure the proper permits. But in the meantime, the board wants to act now. We're not waiting on Moscow. Captain, 32 men disappeared with that boat. Our men. It's time for them to come home. Peter Bream was on board. The youngest son of Arthur Bream, our now retired CEO. Arthur will turn 87 this year. Peter would have been 60. People think it's a com company as... Uh, I can't see it because of this goddamn... Arrow. People think a company as big as Rococo, all we care about is profit. But we're, at, we're about people first. We're a family. What are you hoping to recover? The bodies. The black box, of course. From a PR point of view, the research materials on board could be particularly valuable. Mm. When the ship disappeared, Rococo team was with naturalists from US UCSC to collect rare wildlife. It got the environmentalists off our backs. We know they located two Arctic birds and an eel that have since gone extinct. If their samples were properly stored, it would be a small matter to bring back the Eskimo curlew, which was last seen in 1987. We heartless oil guys get blamed for any number of extinctions, but we liked good press then, and we like it now. Resurrecting a lost species would play pretty well for us. Careful now. All these noble motives are starting to make me suspicious. And the fact is, we go out there, sooner or later we're going to be eyeball to eyeball with Ivan. Maybe not. You're up to speed on the tsunami. The cost of... Kamschatka was obliterated. The coast of Kamschatka was obliterated. Two thousand dead and rescue operations are just beginning. They've got their hands full. Hmm. Additionally, the signal from the derelict is very weak. It's possible no one in the Russian Federation has picked it up yet. It was only lucky we heard it. A USCG unit happened to be on Atu Island for a routine maintenance operation. They've got a little landing strip out there. Atu is only 280 miles away, but they're barely able to pull in derelict signal. And the distress be beacon is only active for about 10 minutes a day. 10 minutes? Why? We'd like to know that, too. One possibility. When are they receiving the, when, when are they receiving the signal? Uh, about noon? Good guess. How'd you know? Well, you had naturalists on board to please the environmentalists. Maybe you had solar panels, too? Say the tsunami rolled the boat a little. Your panels might be catching enough midday light. He's a smart one. I'm the likable one. Cage is the bad temper ones, like in Jaws. Think of Russell here as Hooper. I'm Brody, and Gage, got it, Captain Carpenter, is Quint. I was thinking more like the shark. <laughs> Clever. Russell, our thinking is much the same. Have a look at this. These are the latest satellite images of the atoll. We think until yesterday, Derelith was on her side. The quake that set off the tsunami must have rocked her enough to let the solar array catch the light for the first time in 40 years. But we won't know for sure what happened until we get out there. It's like that Mars probe that was offline for most of a year before mysteriously coming back to life. Luckily, it'll be easier for us to find out what happened than it was for NASA. The Arctic Circle isn't exactly Mars. I feel like that's some foreshadowing right there. Bum, bum, bum. You're right. No one's ever died on Mars. Captain Carpenter, you're willing to pay you a salvage fee five times your usual rate. Great. If I can get back to Anchorage and collect it without getting torpedoed by a Russian sub. Make that we, Captain. The board desires me to go with you, mm. and my wife expects me to wear a life preserver at all times. Oh I've made it a policy never to disagree with either. Yeah, well, all right. Captain Carpenter? Oh, I thought you were going to read Mariah the Mariah Lamb? Oh, zero nine twelve hundred hours, 5th of October. Captain Carpenter, Mariah Lamb, the marine biologist? Mr. Lacombe tells me you're the chap to talk to if I want to buy 11-inch rubber dongs in bulk. Oh, that was you. I took your character. I'm sorry. Here you go. You got both of these. Okay, you're cool. fine. <laughs> you don't think when you first meet him that it'll be such a fun guy? You're from England? No, love. I just put on the accent to impress the lads. Now we know now she's we British. Know. Now okay, we know. great. Well, she said something about having a funny or something. Or oh, I was gotcha, like, oh, gotcha. did I fuck this up? Oh, yeah, well, well, you did. Yeah, well. Own it. You really dredge up a storage container full of dicks? Never know what you're going to find on a salvage. One time I pulled a shipping container out of 40 feet of water, opened it up, and uh, fainted dead away. I saw a triangle of naked bodies and thought I was looking at a human trafficking thing that turned into a mass drowning. What was it actually? 
department store mannequins. It was a long time before the boys stopped writing me about that one. Did we stop did we stop writing him about that? You want to watch out, ma'am. The captain has been known to get the vapors on this, in the presence of anything that resembles a female. Oh, the vapors. I'll try not to look like a girl in your presence. I'll try and stay on my feet in yours. Uh, there's a chance the samples you're looking for will be submerged. You'll have to tell me what I'm hunting for when I go down there. No need. I'll dive with you. It won't be my first wreck. I've been deep water diving these seas since I moved to Alaska for university. If we have time, I'd like to explore Sinekik's crater, though I confess that's a bit beyond my remit. I guess that might be interesting. Dive in the caldera of an old volcano. Together to no, no, keep going. She's not supposed to have that on. Oh. Keep going. Oh, the atoll wasn't caused by volcan volcanism. That's a meteor strike, a couple million years old. Only the one that killed the dinosaurs was bigger. And speaking of dinosaurs, Bill is here. Come along, Bill. Let's find our cabins. I left, but my false teeth might fall out. <laughs> How'd someone like her wind up on this boat? Someone English? Someone smart. I'm not used to a shipmate who can use complete sentences. It's kind of a turn on. No. Well, turned off. Well, get turned off, Clark, or I'll unload you with the rest of the stiff dicks. Sinekik, ungaya ga 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 ta ta ga ga, atoll. Nailed it. Eighteen hundred fifty-five hours, sixth of October. You see that light flashing thing? Yeah, it must be wired into the same solar panel circuit that's powering the distress beacon. It's like a zombie. It's dead, but it doesn't know it. It's, it's, it's got its eyes wide open, and it's making sounds, but there's nothing really alive in there. If we're going to get ghost stories, let them on the beach by a fire. Anyone want to go ashore? Spend the night in one of the last really wild places on the planet? Love to. Wish I could, but as a bosun, my place is here with the other men, sleeping in my coffin-sized bunk and breathing the sweet smell of diesel. Just kidding, I'll bring beer. And don't anyone ask me if I want to come. Do you want to join us, Captain? Want don't figure into it. I'm here for a job, not to watch Tweedledee burn hot dogs while Tweedledillon plays his favorite tunes from Deliverance on his poodle-sized excuse for a guitar. Go if you're going to go. We got weather moving in. This might be our last good night for a while. Your brother seems fun. He's the oldest? Is that me still? Yep. When we were kids, uh, Gage wouldn't pretend the cough was a ship. I tried to change the channel once, and he kicked me uh, off for a mutiny. Broke my collarbone. To be fair, Cage was just a kid then, too. He's grown up a lot since then. From a pint-sized Captain Ahab to a full-blown sociopath. That's cool. That's, yeah, that's a nice shot. Is that supposed to be, like, active volcano? I think so. So many stars. The worst thing about civilization is it took the stars away from us. Not, not from, from oh, not from Rococo sorry. International. You know, they built parts of the original Moonlander. I looked them up online. They're into all kinds of stuff. Oil, nuclear, wind, plastics, national defense, space exploration. I got a theory about the moon, and I think I know how to finance a moon base. I hope you're not going to suggest mining. We looked into it. Impractical at best. Sports! Get ESPN to sponsor a Coliseum for Moon Quidditch. Yeah, I'd dig it. Because of low gravity, the players could fly around just like in Harry Potter. I'd watch. Everyone would watch. Advertising rights could be huge. Bigger than the Super Bowl. I might have had too much beer. You know what I always want to do when I get a little fizzy like this? What? P. I'd better visit the little lady's room. Oh no, oh, she's walking God. on her own. No, no, no! Don't, don't go out on your own. Well, this was a good run. No. Oh, <gasps> oh no! Oh shit! Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa. Hold on. Whoa. Oh shit! It's all right if you need to scream, Raya. <laughs> Okay, so that uh oh wait, wait, wait. I'm 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 actually really excited about this. Mm -hmm. On the next page there's a picture. Okay. 
<laughs> I told you. Just in case you didn't believe him. I told you. <laughs> it, it's, it's Stephen King with a beard. <laughs> My God. I was like, if you ever see a are picture. You, are you sure this just isn't a photo of Stephen King from the 80s? <laughs> it could be. It could pass. Okay, so that dead thing with the weird stuff on its yeah. neck just started talking to her, and that's yeah. how we end with some mystery. It was good. It was really good. Right at 4 p.m. We're still Boom, on baby. target today. Oh, we're on target. <laughs> Coming up next, board gaming downstairs. Thank you all so much for joining us today on Comics and Coffee. I hope you get a chance to pick it up. Make sure to tweet out at hyper underscore RPG on Twitter and let us know what books you picked up this week from your local comic book store or what you're reading on Comixology and anything else involving comic books. Please do let us know. Uh, for everyone else, stick around or head over to twitch.tv slash HyperRPG as we get ready to play some board games. And then after that, we're going to be doing a live watch along of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, baby!